Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Dr. Barkis of Thalmology Tutorials. Today we will discuss about the fungal corneal ulcer. So in this video I will be discussing about the various causes for the fungal corneal ulcer, why it happens, what are the symptoms of the fungal corneal ulcer and what are the signs which are specific for the fungal corneal ulcer as well as the management of the same. So without much delay, let's begin our video. So this group of diseases are nothing but the corneal infections which are caused by fungus. So it can just be fungal keratitis where there is inflammation of the cornea or it can be fungal corneal ulcer where there is epithelial defect also associated with the inflammation of the cornea. So what are these fungus? So these fungus are nothing but group of microorganisms that have a rigid wall okay, and they have distinct nucleus and multiple chromosomes containing both DNA as well as RNA. So what is fungal keratitis? It is the inflammation of the cornea caused due to the fungal etiology. And the fungal keratitis is a significant cause of the ocular morbidity as well as the unilateral blindness if it is not treated. If you come to the incidence, this varies with the climatic condition. So it is more common in the tropical regions compared to the other region. So why it happens? That is the etiology of the fungal corneal ulcer. It usually follows the ocular trauma with a vegetative matter which may be in the form of thorn or even the wooden stick. Even the contact lens usage is also a predisposing factor for the fungal corneal ulcer. If the patient is on long term steroid usage then also they are predisposed for the fungal corneal ulcer. Since it is more common following the trauma with the vegetative matter so the fungal keratitis is more common in the males who are outdoor workers. And this fungal keratitis is also common following the ocular surface disorders. Okay. So which are all the fungi which causes this fungal corneal ulcer. So those can be broadly classified into the filamentous fungus and the non-filamentous fungus. In the filamentous we have the aspergillus and the fusarium. In the non-filamentous type we have the candida. So this is the filamentous fungus which is aspergillus and this is the non-filamentous fungus that is the candida. This filamentous fungus that is aspergillus and the fusarium usually cause ulcers secondary to the ocular trauma that is following the trauma by the vegetative matter or the contact lens wear or even the previous ocular surgery. So if the fungal ulcer is happening in those cases then you should suspect the filamentous fungus as the etiology. Whereas the candida which is a non-filamentous fungus causes disease in the eyes with the pre-existing ocular surface diseases or the patients who are on topical steroid treatment for a long time. Okay. So what is the pathophysiology of this fungal corneal ulcer? So once there is epithelial defect because of any reasons, the fungi adheres to the epithelium, then it penetrates even to the intact desmets membrane and enters into the anterior chamber via its proteolytic enzymatic activity, thereby leading to the ulcer formation. Coming to the symptoms, usually patient presents with the blurred vision. So the degree of blurred vision depends upon the extent and the location of the corneal ulcer. Patient will be having pain. There is intractable photophobia, red eyes, okay, associated with the watering, discharge as well as the foreign body sensation. So these are the symptoms which are present in both the bacterial as well as the fungal corneal ulcer. But when you see in the fungal corneal ulcer, these symptoms are not proportionate to the signs. Means when you examine the patient, the signs are more severe compared to the symptoms. So that is one of the differentiating point between your fungal corneal ulcer and the bacterial corneal ulcer. So what are the signs? So from the beginning if you go on looking into the signs, the vision is decreased depending upon the extent and the location of the corneal ulcer. That is if the corneal ulcer in the center in the pupillary area vision is drastically decreased and if the ulcer is very much severe then also because of the DM folds or the corneal edema the vision will be significantly decreased. If you examine the lids there will be lid edema to some extent. In the conjunctiva the patient may exhibit both conjunctival congestion as well as the serpent corneal congestion. Okay. So these are the signs which I explained just now. So in the lids there will be lead edema. In the conjunctiva there is conjunctival uh, congestion as well as the serpent corneal congestion as well. And when you look into the cornea that is the examination of the corneal ulcer proper. So you will see a corneal ulcer which is having these specific features that is it is dry looking ulcer. It has feathery borders. There is a yellow line of demarcation, there is immune ring of Wesley and satellite lesions. I will explain about these now. So as you can see in this picture, 
the ulcer is dry looking means there is organized exudates over the corneal ulcer so it is dry looking as you can see the margins which are there in the ulcer they are like feathers so that is feathery looking so the ulcer is having feathery borders and one more feature which is very specific for the fungal corneal ulcer is the immune ring of Wesley which usually forms around the ulcer because of the type 3 immunological reaction that is the antigen antibody reaction which happens in the stroma of the cornea leads to immune ring of Wesley. There will be multiple satellite lesions around the corneal ulcer. So these are the features which are specific for the fungal corneal ulcer. If you come to the hypopion, it is very much thick and immobile. And this is also one of the differentiating feature between the fungal corneal ulcer and the bacterial corneal ulcer. In the fungal corneal ulcer, the hypopion is very much thick and immobile. If you ask the patient to change his head position, like from the sitting position to the lying down position, the hypopion will not move in fungal corneal ulcer because it is very thick and immobile. Why it is thick? It is because of the invasion of the anterior chamber by the fungal hyphae which are embedded in the thick exudate. So that causes the hypopion to be thick and hence it is immobile. So the features which I explained just now that is the dry looking ulcer, feathery borders, yellow line of demarcation, immune ring of Wesley and the hypopion, circumcorneal congestion and the satellite lesions. These are more common with the filamentous fungi that is the aspergillus and the fusarium. If you come to the candidial infection of the cornea, there is whitish to yellow stromal infiltration and it may or may not be associated with the AC reaction and the hypopia. That is the features of the candidial infection. The anterior chamber that is hypopia I explained just now. If you come to the intraocular pressure, it will be invariably raised. Always make it a point to measure the intraocular pressure at least digitally. So the corneal ulcer always needs examination under the slit lamp. So stain with the fluorescent stain to demarcate the borders of the corneal ulcer and note down the size of the ulcer. So assess the infiltration and record the size of infiltration, assess the AC reaction by slit lamp examination and avoid the upper eyelid and look for any foreign body which is hidden there in the upper eyelid which can be a cause for your corneal ulcer. So these are the signs and symptoms of the corneal ulcer. So the close DDs for this fungal corneal ulcer are the bacterial keratitis, acanthamoeba keratitis, HSV that is herpes simplex virus keratitis and atypical mycobacterial infection. Sterile bacterial corneal ulcer can also be a DD for the above symptoms. So what are the investigations you do? I have already explained in detail about the systemic and the local investigations which are must in any case of corneal ulcer. So adding to that which are specific for the fungal corneal ulcer, again the corneal scrapings, the procedure which I have explained in my previous video, the link is given in the description box. So by doing corneal scraping, you are not only getting the material for the investigation, you are also decreasing the fungal load of the corneal ulcer and it will allow for the better penetration of the drug into the cornea. So those are the advantages of scraping. Then the important thing is the KOH mount or the KOH preparation. So the KOH mount preparation is a rapid diagnostic tool. So how you do after taking the specimen from doing the scraping of the corneal ulcer, place the specimen on the clean slide, add a drop of 10% KOH, cover with a cover slip, avoid air bubbles in between, then examine with 10x for the fungal elements. The next is the culture on blood agar, gross dextrose agar. So in the investigation we also have the PCR analysis the polymerase chain reaction analysis of the specimen which is a rapid and highly sensitive up to 90% is the sensitivity of this test and this is the current investigation of choice whenever it is available. So with these investigations if you are able to come to the diagnosis of the fungal corneal ulcer and the ulcer is responding to the treatment then fine. Otherwise if the corneal ulcer is not responding to your treatment or if you are not getting sufficient material from the scraping or if the KOH and the culture is not showing any fungal elements but you are strongly suspecting of the fungal corneal ulcer then go for what is known as the corneal biopsy. So if you consider the corneal biopsy, how it is done? It can be done in the OPD under slit lamp or it can be done in the operation theatre. The, here we use a trifan like thing, a small trifan like thing which we place over the corneal ulcer and the surrounding normal tissue area and we just refine the area and then separate it by underlying tissues by using the 50 number blade and then this biopsy material is sent for the culture okay 
so the anterior chamber tap can be used in resistant cases with the endothelial exudates because the organisms may penetrate the endothelium and the final thing is the confocal microscopy which permits the identification of organisms in vivo but this is not widely available okay next moving on to the treatment of the fungal corneal ulcer the treatment of fungal corneal ulcer is little difficult and it often has a long and protracted course it may take from weeks to months to resolve okay. so the daily follow up with the hospital admission is a must so in the medical management again it is in the same lens which i have explained in the bacterial corneal ulcer but there we used to use the antibiotics here we are using the antifungal agents so in the antifungal agents we have natamycin amphotericin b oriconazole and others so coming to the natamycin it is used in the concentration of 5% topical solution and this is the drug of choice for the filamentous fungus that is the aspergillus and the fusarium but it has very poor penetration so it may not be useful when there is deeper infiltration of the corneal ulcer the next is the amphotericin b which is used in 0.15 to 0.5% again topical solution but this topical solution is, is not commercially available so it has to be prepared like we prepared the fortified eye drops so what we do is so we will dilute the commercially available 50 mg amphotericin b injection to get the concentration which is desired so it can be either given topically or even subconjunctival or the intracameral intravitreal and even the intravenous usage can also be done and this amphotericin b has very good activity on both aspergillus as well as the candidal infections this antifungal agent is the oriconazole which should be used in the concentration of 0.5 mg per ml so this also has very broad spectrum activity against candida aspergillus as well as fusarium and this has to be prepared by diluting 1 ml of iv voriconazole okay which contains 10 mg per ml with 19 ml of the sterile water and then used as the topical medication the other antifungal agents are iconazole 1% clotrimazole miconazole ketoconazole and the fluconazole according to one of the trials that is mycotic ulcer treatment trial natamycin was associated with significantly better clinical and the microbiological outcomes compared to ever oriconazole so along with the antifungal agents it is wise to add the antibiotic agent also to prevent the second bacterial infection and the cycloplegics as i have already discussed that is homide or the atropin should be used if the iop is raised treat with anti glaucoma medications use vitamin c tablets okay which will lead to corneal remodeling and helps in healing by inhibiting the polymorphonuclear cells okay and recently they are trying corneal collagen cross linking also as a treatment of fungal corneal ulcer the tetracycline can be added that is doxycycline 100 mg bd it has anti collagenous activity thereby prevents the thinning of the cornea so coming to the role of systemic antifungals in the management of fungal corneal ulcer so where these systemic antifungals are indicated whenever the corneal ulcer is very severe or if the ulcer is deeper or the ulcer is near the limbus and when you are suspecting fungal end of thalamitis secondary to the fungal corneal ulcer then you will go ahead with systemic ketoconazoles fluconazole or oriconazole and whenever you are administering these drugs make sure that patient's liver function is normal fluconazole is given in the dosage of 200 mg bd oriconazole 400 mg bd for the first day and then followed by 200 mg bd and these medication should be given at least for 2 to 3 weeks duration and make sure that the liver function test remain normal during the course of these systemic antifungal agents so this is about the medical management of fungal corneal ulcer coming to surgical management of the fungal corneal ulcer the epithelial debridement that is the scraping what you are doing is one of the mode of treatment of the fungal corneal ulcer otherwise go ahead with the cyanoacrylic tissue glue or the bandage contact lens finally the penetrating or the lamellar keratoplasty is the answer so hope this video on fungal corneal ulcer is useful to all of you if you like my videos please do subscribe to my channel press the bell icon for further notifications please do like and share my videos and leave your valuable comments thank you so much